How do you approach the the game plan for tomorrow? Because he said he's playing. Do you have to have contingencies if he doesn't or if he's not 100%? Uh, I mean, we've been in a situation throughout the course of the year. He didn't play all 82. And uh, it's no secret if he doesn't play, they'll be on a start. And we'll have to figure it out from there. But, uh, um, you know, it is what it is. Injuries are part of it. You got to do what you can to deal with them as best you can. Uh, but the next guy has to be ready to step up in case something does happen. Where's your level of confidence or certainty that he will be able to play tomorrow? He seems pretty sure of it. I don't, you know, I'm pretty good at being pretty even killed and just waiting to see what happens. So I don't think much about it because I can think about it as long as I want to and it ain't going to change. Well, what would <laughs> the know? process be for making that decision tomorrow? Oh, it's got to be it's got to be me making me agreeing for him to play, him agreeing to play, our medical staff uh, agreeing to play, and then our team doctors doing the same thing. So it's a it's it's a joint deal. It's not just him making it. It's not just me making it. It's not, it's we all have to be on the same page with it, like like how it's been all season. Is it premature for him to be saying at this point that he he believes he's going to go? No, because the key word is what would you just say? Beliefs. Yeah. Okay. So he's not saying I'm going and I'm gonna play 40 minutes. He, yeah, he's he's gonna try to give it a go, okay. you, you know. And so I think that's what you, you just go with at the at the end of the day, and 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 you see what happens. Mike, you, know? you've had, you've had to err on the side of caution with injuries earlier in the I'm season. I'm sorry. You've had to err on the side of caution yeah. sometimes with with injuries earlier in the season, less meaningful games, uh, if you want to call them that. Obviously, with the playoffs, did that change things in your mind as well it, when it comes to even yourself letting a player go or listening to them more than maybe what it would be in the regular season? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, during the regular season, obviously, you know, sometimes you even sit a guy because you're like, you know what, this is a great time. He's injured, but this is a great time for him to try to uh, heal up a little bit from being banged up and also to get some rest, you know. And, and, and then on top of that, sometimes it's like, okay, I want to see if this young guy can step up or if this guy can step up as a starter too and, and, and what uh, the trickle-down effect because if somebody else starts, that means somebody else got to – Play as a backup, so there's a, there's a lot that you're you know that you're willing to see in in, in the regular season. And it's a little different to playoffs, and I mean, shoot, look at Steph. I mean, he played. I mean, 43 minutes in a in a 48 minute game, whatever he played, that's not happening during the regular season. You know, and they're not going to chase a win like that. But you do certain things during the playoffs to try to get the win. Yeah. If De'Aaron is limited, how much more important does it? become to get uh, Domas back at his typical um, sort of field goal percentage? I don't know what he's shooting from the field, So, but but whether De'Aaron plays or not, uh, all of our guys, in, including Domas, I mean, it would be great to have them play at a high level. You, you know, um, HB's not shooting the ball well, Kevin's not shooting the ball well, Keegan's not shooting the ball well, except for the last game. So this is the playoffs, you know, you got to be able to adjust and adapt to whatever's in front of you. And I, I mean, whether Foxy plays or not, we all have to play better. You know, that's how I look at it. Mike, after reviewing the film and thinking about the game, did, did you have any regrets about calling that timeout before the last possession? Uh, initially I did, because you always second uh, second guess yourself, but but the reason why I didn't, and I, and I don't, especially after watching the film, uh, I don't know if you guys recall how bad we were in transition in the fourth quarter, not just missing shots at the rim, or taking crazy, sorry about that, or taking crazy shots at the rim. So that was one thing that went through my mind. Uh, also, the turnovers that we had in transition it was the second thing that went through my mind. And then when I saw Keegan get the rebound. It's a little different. Like if Foxy got the rebound and he starts to go, maybe I pull back. But if you go, it, what really made me 100% okay with taking it is, as bad as we were in transition in the fourth, was if you go back and you watch the film, but it, when Foxy got it and he was ahead of the pack, all the rest of our guys were behind him. So it would have been a one-on-four situation. And who knows what, what would have happened, you, you, you know, in that situation. But I know I did not have the confidence uh, in, our, in our group, when when Keegan got the rebound, uh, especially the way we played in the fourth quarter in transition, to let it go, nine times out of ten, I, I I'd let it go, you know, uh, just because you don't want the defense to have a chance to get set. Having said that, I, I mean I don't I don't know if you, I don't know if we could have gotten a better look in that situation. Mike, did you have a conversation with Harrison just about you know? 
these things happen and you know showing some love after a tough a tough miss no he i mean he's a veteran he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't need that i'm sure his wife probably did you know <laughs> or his family did but he doesn't need that and that's that's not why we lost the game i mean i if you guys rewatch that game and you just watch us in transition in the fourth quarter alone okay and then you see how many times we gapped clay and steph in the fourth quarter and they hit a three to make us that, 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 that's where we lost the game, if you're trying to pinpoint it specifically. Uh, also, in the third quarter, we gave up eight second chance points. We gave up three the rest of the game, but in the third quarter, we gave up eight second chance points, and they also had nine, nine free throw attempts. So, you, you know, you do a better job in those areas, you know, because eh, in my opinion, they, they're kind of self-inflicted. You got to box out. We didn't do a good job boxing out in the third quarter, and they made us pay. We reached a lot in the third quarter, uh, and not 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 where you're chucking a cutter, but where you're reaching or doing something that you shouldn't be doing, and they're getting to the free throw nine times. You know, in the fourth quarter, uh, you're throwing the ball away, or we're not spaced right, and we're trying to thread the needle to make a pass, especially you know when you got a guy like Draymond sitting down there who plays two people better than anybody in this league, you know, and the simple single is right in front of you, you know. I mean, you, you talk about, the, you, you gap Clay and Steph with three and five minutes to go and they hit big threes. You talk about those things and and it's a one-point game at the end of the day, you, you know, so we have to be sharper for a longer period of time if we expect to beat the defending champs. I know you mentioned one of the transition issues after <clears throat> post game was kind of going up looking for calls, mm -hmm. um, but did you feel like there was anything else that you needed to clean up in transition? Turnovers. Turnovers. Yeah, because our spacing wasn't great. There was two or three times where where we cut and the ball's getting driven. So if you think about this, if you're cutting to the rim and the ball's getting driven and there's one guy back there, do you think you can make that pass all the time? It's going to be tough, if you, especially if Draymond's sitting back there and or Loon. You're pretty good in that situation. If in transition you're driving the ball and you stay spaced and there's one guy back there, can you make that pass? Yeah, you can. And now you got to live or die with an over three. At the end of the day, that's a great shot, especially for us. I don't care what our percentage is. If we're going to go out that way, we're going out that way. But we're going to keep playing fast and we're going to keep taking open threes, but our spacing has to be better. So the turnovers and driving to the rim and jumping in the air, trying to get body contact and, 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 and ask for a call, that, that's what I equate to. I said this before, these guys are the champions. You're not going to be able to score a decision against the champions. And when you drive into somebody's body and you look for that contact, you're trying to get a decision. You're, try, you're putting the, 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 the win or loss in the referee's hands. We ain't winning that. So we got to knock them out, which means we got to play the right way. If you're going to go to drive it, you better freaking dunk it. And now if you miss a dunk and they don't get fouled, that's one thing. Otherwise, space, and if they want to collapse like that, let that thing fire from the three-point line. Coach Brown, uh, I have to ask you, uh, Clay the other day, he said some pretty significant things about playing in the backcourt with uh, Seth. You know, they've been a generational uh, backcourt for many, many years, and you've been there, and you see, you know, how they operate. I just want to get your thoughts about, you know, their play on the court and off the court, if you could share any intel. No, nah, he's right. They, they they change the game with the way they play. I mean, they, everybody's trying to copycat them and, and imitate those guys. They've been doing it since for now, probably I don't know, eight, ten years now. You know, and you know the the, the cool part about it is, uh, just as special as they are on the court, they're special as human beings too. So I I, I mean, he's a hundred percent right with whatever he says about them on the court and or off the court. How do you strike the balance of? You know, what you're talking about with transition, wanting to be smart, make the right decisions, but also obviously you're telling a young team, like, go, 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 go at all times. Like how, especially in a playoff environment, how difficult is that for them to go fast at all times but also make their it, way? It, 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 it's, it, I, 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 like I told them during film, I, I could sit up here and talk about it, uh, but they got to feel it and go through it and try to figure it out. It ain't easy. But the playoffs against the defending champions, that ain't supposed to be easy. And I promise you this, Slade, if we say slow it down, we will get hammered. 
if we try to play a, a walk it up executing uh, a game against these guys. We got to run, 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 because that's what our strength is. And we're going to get better as we go along, and we're going to grow, win or lose during this situation. Mike, just how encouraging is it that you're you were one little bit of a miss off of being up 3-1 in the series? Hey, I, 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 it's, it's really encouraging from the standpoint, again, you guys are freaking champions. They've been through it. This is our first time trying to figure out how to get past the first round. And again, you know, we may have had guys in the playoffs, but, you know, at what level and at what impact did they make to help their team get to the second round? Not only that, we're going against, like I said already, the NBA champions. So if you sit here and you ask me, how would you feel about 2-2? Two -two? Uh, yeah, I wish it was 4-0 and we were moving on. But we're 2-2. Two -two. We took care of what we supposed to at home. They took care of what they supposed to at home. Now it's a three-game series. Let's see if we got enough to get it done.